Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator building tutorial. So today what we're going to be working on is some textures and stuff for a custom tree. Uh, yes, our next project will be on basically building a maple forest. So we're going to be creating everything that we need from the sapling to the actual script for or the textures for the blocks and i'm going to walk you through the process of basically building the tree from scratch so uh today what we're going to be basically working on is the texturing we'll start with the actual setting up the workspace for the um uh, paint.net and then we're going to clear out the thing, texture our stuff, use uh, the grayscale from the vanilla game. Um, I've done a tutorial on that in the past, just search up how to obtain uh, vanilla textures or something like that and it should come up in the search results. And uh, then we're going to basically use that grayscale that they use in their uh, map and then we're going to basically make our own texture from that and not from the original texture but we're actually going to be designing it completely pixel by pixel and uh yeah so uh enough with me saying what we're going to be doing let's get into it and i'll uh explain more as we go and then basically press the delete button and it will basically clear the entire um area that we need to do so it's just basically uh select all so control a and then basically delete and then it'll clear everything all right so now that we got that uh what we can do is we can actually use uh vanilla textures to basically help us with the default minecraft kind of hue colors and we'll use that as a um well not so much the hue but the shading so we can actually use the same shades as vanilla. So we're going to just go into a folder that I have with the resources. I use this for basically getting the color palettes and stuff from the uh, base program. And you can get this from the Minecraft jar, same way that you would basically create a resource pack and you have all the files. So we're going to go under block and I'm just going to open up the first one, which is acacia leaves. This will do just fine. Uh, they're all about the same hue colors and stuff. So we've got our texture here that we have that we're going to basically make. And then this is what basically colors or shades that are used in the um, acacia leaves. So we have something to work with now. And we can use these same shades to basically create our own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of start working on some different shapes and stuff like that and we'll see what we can come up with and maybe create something that will be a little bit unique and stuff so I'm not sure how it will totally turn out but we'll see what it basically does when we actually get in game and stuff so we'll try doing some weird stuff uh, some shapes and stuff like that just to kind of break things up and then we'll basically after that what we'll do is we'll basically take a look um, if it's seamless or not and I'm just going to do some really interesting shapes try to get it to function so I'll just speed this up a little bit and then you can basically see what the result is Okay, so now that we got our basic shape uh, that we got set up, what I'm going to do is go and hit Control A again to select it all, and then I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file, and we're going to set this to 32 by 32, or the double double the size of the actual file that we basically copied. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and zoom in and then we're going to paste it like this to see if it's seamless. Now, if all the parts kind of connect up with each other, I do see a couple issues with this. Uh, for example, this part right here shouldn't connect. So I'm going to just quickly change that uh, maybe a little bit on this part as well. And um, then what we want to do is make sure that we can see where the 16 so this is 16 by 16 and then I don't want this part to connect either so I'm just going to remove a couple of those things right here and then we're going to just select it again 
and I don't want these parts to connect. So what I'm going to do is basically just go like that. And we're going to maybe bring that a little bit more over and bring that a little bit like that. And then what we're going to do is basically select that again. So select it 16 by 16. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paste it in the same location. And we're going to see if it aligns a little bit better. So, so far, so good. And it looks okay. This is a little bit wonky, but uh, we might be able to fix that up, uh, make it just one solid piece instead. So that would be connected to this part here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of expand that a little bit. And I think think that might be a part right there. We'll see how that works out. So we'll bring that up to here so far. Yeah. Okay. And then we have that piece right there. So yeah, that look that looks a lot better when it's actually set out like that. So now that we got that, what I'm going to do is just control A and or pardon me, uh, just select our 16 by 16 selection. And then I'm going to go control C and then I'm going to bring it back into our workspace. And then we have the section that we basically need for our seamless texture. Now that we got that, we can actually start working on shading. And then we'll do another test back into our template here. So what we need to do is we just kind of need to see how they got it all set up. So it's kind of around the edges. It's kind of pixelated. Uh, it's mostly random, but you can kind of see that it's kind of got some shape to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of work on different parts like this, and then we'll kind of work in the other textures and stuff. So as long as we keep to the shape, then we should be fine. So I'm just going to do that. And I'll speed up the process of basically doing this. So I'll do time lapse. All right, so now that we got that all set up, let's copy again our texture. We'll do Control A and then Control C to copy it, and then we'll bring it back into here. Oh, that doesn't seem right. So Control A and then Control C. And there we go, we got our texture back in. So we'll just see if every th with all the shades, they actually align up properly and make it look proper. So, so far, so good. Uh, just make sure that it's lined up. Yeah, that should look actually really good when we actually bring it into the actual game. So we'll save this as our leaves. Uh, I'm just going to call this um, something different. So the reason why we're using grayscale is we're basically going to use the uh, in-game texture. Um, what is it called? Uh, the biome colors and stuff like that. So that's why we're using the grayscale. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to just give it a name. So I'm going to call it um, uh, maple uh, leaves, so underscore leaves. And then we'll save it to our desktop for now. And I'll put it into a folder later um, for storage. Uh, the other thing that we're going to need is a bark texture. So what I'm going to grab is um basically a new 16 by 16 and what we're going to do is just start from scratch now we can actually use some colors from online as well so if we go on to if we go on to google and then go to images we can actually get some colors off of the internet so we can go and search up uh, maple bark and then we get some results from Maple. Uh, we can actually use some of these results for our own project. Now, not the exact textures, but we can use the shades. So uh, finding a good one is always uh, the hardest thing. So 
we need to kind of figure out what would probably be more appealing. I think this one might be a good one to work with. It has a whole bunch of different colors. You can see that it's a, a lot more vibrant. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to actually copy the image and then I'm going to go into here, create a new and it should automatically set the size. And then what we can do is we can zoom in a little bit and we will see if we have any pixels that we can basically work with. Now there's a whole bunch of different pixels here. A lot of these ones are actually a lot white on the bark itself, so I'm not gonna actually use this particular texture. We'll try something a little bit different. Let's see if we can't find a different one. So maybe we can go with this one here. That one seems like it might have some different colors. So we'll copy this one, we'll try this one out. And yeah, we can actually work with that one. So we'll create a new one for that and then we'll paste this in. And there's a whole bunch of different colors here that we can actually work with on different hues and stuff like that. So we can actually use this. Uh, we'll start with the lightest color. I like to start with the lightest and then work my way to the darkest. So somewhere around here would probably be the lightest. So we'll just select that one just randomly. And then we will kind of bring in our uh, texture. Now we have to kind of keep in mind how this is actually formed. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's a uh, pebbly, kind of like a long bark lines. You can kind of see that they're kind of like this, a little bit like that in like here. So there's a different um, pattern than regular bark. So what we can kind of do is we can kind of mimic that in our example here so we can kind of bring this in like that and we'll try keeping to the shape and stuff so we'll kind of bring this in and they're very close together so we might want to kind of branch that out so something like that okay so now that we eh, I'm not really too happy with that we can hit the control uh, Z to undo and then we'll kind of try working on expanding this a little bit so do some larger shapes like this. See if we can't get a more neat shape. So something like that. And again, I'm trying to follow the um, pattern of what I've done on the side. So this is right across from here. That's right across from here. So there's a different shapes and stuff that we're basically using. Uh, we might want to break off this just a little bit. And we will kind of fix that up a little bit like that. Might be able to fit a small one right in here. And just try to do that. We'll see if that works a little bit. And we might be able to do something like this as well. Okay, now that we have all that uh, space here, what we can basically do is go into our texture side here and we can see how it's basically connects. So again, we're using the seamless texture method to see how it basically connects. I'm not too happy with this area right here and that connection there needs to kind of be fixed. So uh, we're going to just quickly remove that part and the other part is down here. So we might be able to fit something in there. So we'll just um, control A for that, and then we'll bring it back over to our workspace. And then it's this section right here that we want to kind of fit in. So something like that maybe. And then we'll try again. And this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that particular layout. Uh, we can... Um, start adding the different shades. Now we don't want too many shades. Uh, we're actually going to create a palette uh, right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new 16 by 16. This isn't actually going to be used for anything but other than basically our palette. So I'm just going to create a 3 by 3 area for the texture. And then we're going to go into our actual image and we're going to zoom in and we're going to grab at least um, five or six different text or shades that we can basically work with all different um, 
parts that we can work with. So this one's a little bit darker and then we want to go a little bit darker than that. So we'll probably go with this, uh, this one right here maybe. That one should be good. And then we'll add that here. And then we want uh, some other darker shades as well. So the really dark ones. So for example, uh, we want uh, this one right here. That one will be good. And then we'll bring that down here. And then we want um, probably that one. And then we want another one for our shading. So this one right here. So those are the colors that we're going to basically use for our maple texture. Uh, these ones will be for the lighter ones and the other ones down here will be for the darker ones. We might also want to reserve a couple textures for the um, like shading and stuff like that. So if we're going to go with shading, we might need a couple more. Uh, we will um, probably add one more shade that we can basically use. Now I'm going to go with something between uh, those ones that we have. So something a little bit more neutral, but we'll go with that one maybe, see if that matches up. It's pretty much the same, so let's go a little bit darker than that. Try this one. That one should work. All right, so we'll work with that. And what we can do is we have our shading. These ones will be used for our shading. So this one and this one here. So those are our shading ones. And then we have our main textures, which are basically these five here. So that's basically what we're gonna work with for our main wood. And then these are basically gonna be our accent colors. So once we got that, we can actually go back into our texture. We're going to just select uh, our texture here. And then what we're going to do is bring that down to zero. We're going to paste that in and that's going to replace our color with the one that we selected here. Now we can basically add our texturing layout for our bark. So we can start working in some of the colors that we have with the other one. So we can kind of bring this in a little bit like this, just kind of seeing how the bark actually works a little bit. We can make it kind of work with the colors that we have. Uh, now there are five colors, so we can use um, either this one on the dark side or on the light side, uh, depends on what we want to do. We might not even use uh, this really dark one. We might use this one instead. Actually, I think that might be better. So we'll copy this one over and then that leaves us uh, two textures for either side of the shading. So we'll grab this one next. Oop. Actually, let's finish uh, working on this texture. I'm just going to speed this up and uh, cut back in once I got the texturing for the darker part and the lighter part all set up. All right, now that we got that part done, uh, what we can start working on is the shading a little bit. So we're gonna use these two colors here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to just kinda brighten up some of the sides here just uh, randomly. Uh, we want to kind of follow the shape of the part that um, basically uh, goes along the edge here. So generally the light's on facing this side here and then the dark side is on this corner. So what you wanna do is kinda of just follow the uh, edge line and add your shade as you want. So basically we can do something like this and um, we'll slowly work in some of the shading and stuff like that. Now that we've basically got the shading on these parts, uh, we can just touch up that just a little bit 
And um, what we want to do is we want to add our other shading for the part down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the darker side. So on this side here uh, to basically add our shading on the dark side here. And that should help with giving it some depth as well as um, make it not so monotone. So we're just going to kind of build that in just a little bit. Just enough where we can get a little bit of uh, results from it. And it should help with it popping out a little bit more too. So make it look like it's actually popping out. And um, just do a little bit down here. And let's try that again. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. And then you can kind of see the difference on this one up here compared to this one down here. This is very flat where this one has more depth. So you can kind of see how that basically worked out. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the results of this. Um, not too impressed with the actual time. Again, you want to spend a lot of time working on your pixel art and stuff like that. But this is a decent quality one. It's better than your default flat texture like this. So I would definitely use this instead if I had to. But um, overall, it's not the best quality if I had to choose it over uh, something that I spent more time on. Um, a texture can take a long time to actually come up with. Um, for me, it usually takes a couple hours to actually work on. So this is only done in like 20, 30 minutes. So this isn't going to be perfect when it actually comes down to it. Uh, the more experience you get from actually working with pixels and stuff, the more um, skills that you know how to fix things. Uh, and the faster it actually results in you actually fixing things. So this is um, a good enough texture for the wood for now. Uh, we'll use this. So we'll go with um, maple and then we'll go underscore log um, side. And then we'll save this. And then what we want to do is we want to actually make our inside texture for the um, actual, uh, what do you call it, the actual log itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically just, generally what you want to want to do is you want to basically add your um, texture for the planks that you made for the color and use those hues in. But uh, because we don't have that, we're going to have to use another Google image. So we're just going to use actually this one here. We can kind of see the inner side of the maple tree. And we're going to copy that. And then we're going to paste this in somewhere around here. And then we can kind of use what we have here. So I'm going to start with the lighter one again. And we'll work our way out into darker shades. So if I can find the uh, log there. OK, there we go. And we'll start with our lightest one on the outside. So we'll go like this. And then we'll just kind of fill this in using the fill tool, select the tool that we want. And then we have something to work with right there. Uh, now we'll go to a different shade. So something around, maybe around here. And we only want about four of these. So not too many of them. And uh, we will kind of blend in the shades just a little bit. So we want a darker, uh, a lighter one like this. So we'll kind of go like that around the edge, like that. And then we'll probably want some in here. And then probably some around here. And in the middle. And then what we want is a little bit darker from that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this texture somewhere around there. And then we're going to fill this in like this. And this will be our lighter, darker texture. And this will kind of go between the shades for the maple itself. And then we need a darker texture than that. We have kind of some darker shades over here we can work with. So 
So we'll do something like that. And that should be good for our inner part. Now, again, it's really done quick, so I, you would want to adjust the hue of them to kind of make them blend a little bit more and work with your hue offset a little bit. Now, there is a lot of hue offset with this already, but um, generally you can get a better experience if you do it yourself. But we'll save this as our inner part. So we'll save this as just our inside or actually top, we'll say log top, or end, pardon me, I think it, Minecraft says end, so we'll do end. And then we just have the actual texture for the sapling to do. So we'll quickly create a new texture, 16 by 16, and then we'll just use the textures that we've basically gotten uh, from our bark, so these ones. And we'll start working on a texture for our sapling. So what we want to do is kind of build up a stem type thing. And then we can fill this in with whatever we want. So we'll go like something like that. Bring it down like this a little bit. And maybe a little branch up that way. That should be good. And now we want to use a darker shade to basically fill in some of the shading for that. So we'll go and go like that a little bit. And we might want to add some darker shading down on the, the root side of things. So we'll go with um, this one right here and we'll just kind of darken that part around here, maybe these parts, and maybe a couple of those. Just to give it some depth. Okay, so that should be good. And then what we're gonna do is, because it's autumn right now, I'm going to just grab uh, some red color from here. I'm going to change it a little bit to the orange scale. And I'm going to lower the saturation uh, to about here. And then I'm going to darken it a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically add some leaves and stuff like that to kind of give it a effect that it's uh, maple. So we're going to actually start with a new layer so we don't lose our default layer. And we can kind of just outline where we want our leaves to go. So again, um, you don't want to hide all the branches and stuff. We want to keep some of that, but um, we don't want all of it to show either. So we'll go like this maybe, and we'll do some around here. So that will be kind of what we go with, and we want to darken that a little bit. So we're going to go about five points and then maybe brighten this up a little bit and, pardon me, darken it. And then we'll kind of add some different shades in here as well to give it some texture. And then we'll darken it some more, about five, and then we'll set this off by five, and then we'll have some more texturing that we can basically do. Just kind of work in the darker side, so it's uh, on the darker scale thing, so something around here. And um, we'll probably go one more for red, so about 10, darken that about five or so. So something like that. And that should be good for our maple texture for our sapling. All right, so now that we got that, we can merge down these two layers and then we got our sapling for our um, actual tree itself. 
Now, what we need to do is we're going to save this as our maple sapling. And once we got this all set up, uh, next episode, what we can do is we can start working on the actual elements and then we'll start working in bringing the actual textures and stuff into the program, getting the elements set up and then we can start working on building and stuff like that and then finally testing out in game so outside of that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out